the Thoughty or Tea podcast. What is stimming and what are some examples of it? Stimming is self-stimulatory behavior and it usually has the focus of regulating through repetitive action. It used to be thought that stimming had no purpose, that it Mm. was purposeless repetitive action. Thankfully, they figured out that it serves a purpose, that it is very regulatory for many folks, not only autistic people stim, non-autistic people stim, um, neurodivergent and neurotypical people stim. Autistic individuals just tend to stim more often, Mm -hmm. although stimming is not a mandatory criteria to receive an autism diagnosis. I also just want to add to the definition of stimming. I think a lot of the time folks think of stimming as something that autistic individuals do only to regulate negative emotions like Mm -hmm. frustration, overwhelm, anger, uh, maybe like a routine change, different things like that. When in fact, autistic stimming often is an expression of regulating joy, happiness, and other positive feelings. So we might see individual stim in a variety of ways using and tapping into sensory input from seven out of the eight senses. So we have eight senses. Most people think we have five. Sorry. Mind blown. (laughs) There's eight, and I can briefly describe each one. The first five are the easiest. (laughs) So we have sight, which is when we take in sensory input from what we see. Mm -hmm. We have hearing, where we take in sensory input of sound. Smell, which is the olfactory sense. Taste, which is the gustatory sense, and touch, which is when we take in sensory stimuli from our skin primarily. And it's it's what clocks and yeah, it's what clocks and things like texture, but also sometimes clocks and things like pressure, which Mm -hmm. is directly related to the sixth sense, which is not to be related to the movie, The Sixth Sense. <laughs> we, see, we, we can see the ghosts, you know, we, we can sense yeah. the ghosts. <laughs> I mean, some autistic individuals do have a lot of strengths in that due to our ability to tap into the senses. That is not what this podcast is about. <laughs> maybe so for sixth, another one. Maybe another one, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> so the sixth sense that I'm referring to is proprioception or mm. the proprioceptive sense And I like to think of this as our sense of bodiness. It helps us know where our body is in relation to space and how close to get to something, how far away. It also really helps us with hand-eye coordination, as well as how much pressure to apply in the push-pull experience, like if you're going to push a ball or push a chair in or put a glass down. Then we also have the vestibular sense, which is my favorite. Located... That's your best <laughs> right? I mean, I really love the vestibular sense too. We'll get to that. Well, I mean, it's it's good in a sense that I really enjoy stims that are related to it, yeah. but bad in a sense because I keep falling into stuff all the time. Like, <laughs> yeah. So the vestibular sense is located in the inner ear, which is mm. interesting because we often think of the vestibular sense as the sense of balance. And most people, when we think of balancing, we think of our legs or we think of our core. Mm-hmm. But if you were to spin your head around really fast several times, you get dizzy. And that's because the vestibular sense is located there. So this helps us to know where our body is in relation to gravity. And the vestibular sense and the proprioceptive sense combine into what I like to call the senses of movement and Mm -hmm. they help us move our body in all the day to day. So we also have an eighth sense, which is not a STEMI, but it's the interoception sense, interoceptive Mm -hmm. sense, which I like to call the internal sense. It helps us clock our heart rate cues. It helps us to clock our hunger and thirst cues and whether or not we need to go to the bathroom. So that's a very important sense, especially in relation to self-regulation. But like I said, it's 
I'm sure there's a way to stem with it. I'm sure someone's stemming with the interoception <laughs> sense. Like I'm sure it's happening, but there's I not really I a don't, list. I don't know. Like <laughs> maybe if you I, like plug your ears and like count your heartbeat, things like that, yes, I could see yeah, being like yeah. a fun stemmy thing for some. Yeah. But examples. So if we're mm-hmm. stemming with our sense of sight, we might love to look at flashing lights, like your light there in the background, or my microphone here. We might like to look at music visualizers that go round and round and round. And those sorts of things can be very stimmy for the 8D kind of or I know I know that you have the, like things like ASMR streams and stuff like like for, Oh, for they me, show where they show. Yeah, I usually they have think like of the sounds right. it's like the... <laughs> Yeah, I think even gaming, we were talking about gaming before, they're in some like RPGs, they're such fascinating mm. and gorgeous and beautiful graphics that I've just paused and stared at like a waterfall and an ocean and in an RPG and just stared at it for like 10 minutes, like not moving my character. And yeah. I've actually started crying because it's so like um, joyful for me as a STEM. Yeah, I think a lot of people don't really recognize or consider visual or sight-based stemming because it's not really something that we see an autistic person doing unless we notice they're staring at visualizer for a really long time or staring at a flashing light for a really long time, but it generally doesn't affect other people. And since most folks, when they think about autism, they think about how it affects them as an outsider, Mm. there's not a lot of discussion around sight-based stemming. Mm -hmm. There's also stemming through our sense of hearing. And the first thing that comes to mind with that is listening to the same song on repeat. And whenever I tell someone I've been listening to the same song on repeat and they're like, oh, I do that too. And then they look at like my play count back when I used to use a like iTunes, they would look at my play count and they'd be like, wait, you've listened to this song 10,000 they, times. They think that you're putting it in a playlist and you're sort of playing it yeah. around, but we're actually literally just like got it on the repeat one just like mm-hmm. <laughs> over and over again. <laughs> and I would have like maybe a really stressful day at work and come home and just lie down on the floor and listen to the same song mm-hmm. on repeat for 30 minutes to an hour as a means of self-regulating that stress. Mm-hmm. There's other ways to stem through the oral sense or through hearing like just by playing sounds, I think we often like think of maybe an autistic person who has an app on their phone that makes sounds mm. and they like to mm. press those sounds again and again. Like a Something storybook, that, like mm. with the the little things that you can, I can, yes! can oh my gosh, yeah. I totally forgot about those. Those were a dream <laughs> when I was a kid. Or water, and, water or pebbles, sand, like, mm-hmm. I know it's a, it's a little bit sort of, tactile as well but i think definitely like the sound of water you know you get those sort of indoor waterfalls or fires or you know mm-hmm. i think for me that kind of stuff really helps I, I i hate silence like silence is really really hard for me like i i always have to have something playing on in the background or um even even whilst we're talking i i have like a spotify playlist of it's um I like chilled music that I play and I do it for pretty much every single thing that I do, whether it's like standing up and doing like some public speaking or, or chatting to people or I don't know. It just kind of, I think it, for me, it fills up spaces. I think I feel like I always need to be like stimulated by some kind of noise. Mm-hmm. Yeah. It can be really fun and exciting and also really calming in a lot of ways. And then we have smell. Mm -hmm. Stimming through smell might look like using lots of essential oils on the nose. It might look like, you know, just smelling everything, smelling the same thing over and over again. We have taste. 
often when I think about stemming through taste, I think of that person who really likes intense, intense flavors Mm -hmm. and wants to like have all the spices in their food and they use them often. And then when I think of touch, I think of, you know, rubbing a plushie, uh, blankets, and maybe something that's rough. Yeah. (laughs) Some people might even like rough textures or bumpy textures, just really tapping into that. Touch and taste often get confused with different proprioceptive senses, or I mean proprioceptive stimming, Mm -hmm. because we might think of someone who chews on things constantly and think taste, but yes, or think yeah. touch, but it really often is proprioception because it has to do with applying pressure to the body. It and is a little related the muscles to muscles contract and mm-hmm. yeah. so using jewelry or just chewing on pens that is a proprioceptive stem. Another proprioceptive mm-hmm. stem is to use weighted blankets and different things like that. You might also have um, someone who rolls things a lot across the floor or across a table. That's tapping into that sense as well. We have vestibular. So we've got the spinning, 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 and swaying and rocking, maybe even pacing. Those stems are actually the ones that we think of the most when we think of autistic stemming. And what's funny is that We often don't even know what sense that's tapping into. We don't know about the vestibular sense. And so that's a really big one. I personally love spinning. Good day, viewers and listeners. Apologies for my very rude interruption to our regularly scheduled broadcast. I just want to remind you that if you have enjoyed the podcast thus far, please make sure to rate, subscribe, like, comment, and share. All of these actions are pretty much the lifeblood of a small, independent creator like myself, and it will help me get most of my work, more of my work, to people who really need it. If you want to stay up to date with my life, get behind the scenes content, check out my daily blogs, head over to the Instagram, at Thomas Henley UK. You'll find a link to that down in the description, alongside my range of neurodiversity clothing, just like this strong, powerful autistic hoodie that I love so much. And my website, of course, where you can find a contact email to book me for one-to-one autism coaching, interviews, workplace training, and speaking. So, thank you very much for listening to this very annoying self-advert, and I hope you enjoy the rest of the show. I love walking on my tiptoes to challenge my balance. Not that I'm thinking about it when I do it, but it's getting me that sensory input. And I also rock a lot. And then we had interoception, but we also said that maybe, maybe yeah. plugging your ears and listening maybe, to your yeah, heartbeat. Maybe, <laughs> maybe something, something like this. I, I think you could, you could think of a lot of different things, but I, I do think, I do think, do you, is there any other ones that you want to touch on or is it? I think I covered all the senses. I think yeah. I actually did that. <laughs> yeah. 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 I, um, when you, when you were talking about sort of like the different, sort of senses specifically using like the scientific um names for like the senses and stuff i was thinking about you know obviously i i not obviously but i went to university to study biomed and um one of one of the modules was um around like senses and things like that and we were talking about all like the inner mechanisms and like even even senses as we as we see and, and view them, they're very like multifaceted. For example, the thing like uh, to do with touch, you know, different neurons or different nerves are like activated by different kinds of sensations and pressure. And, you know, so like the light, light touch can activate different neurons than the ones that are involved in like heavy pressure. Even going so far as to things like nociception or like to do with like pain, you know, things like for specifically for me, I know it's not to do with stimming, but um, I feel sharp pain very, very intensely. And they're, they're like related to these, these group of neurons called alpha delta fibers. And they're very like 
uh, they've got loads of lots of this stuff called myelin around it, which allows them to go like really quickly. And that's why when, you know, you get a cut or you get like a prick or something, it's like you jump away from it quickly because it's like such a fast sort of electrical signal. And then you also have like stuff around um, blunt pain around the C fibers, which are like very, very slow. Um, you know, the system doesn't react to them very quickly, but it's sort of like a, a weird sort of dull pain. You know, like if you have like an achy leg or something, you know, you banged it or something. And I don't feel that a lot. So it's, it's you know, obviously it, it doesn't lend well to me taking injuries seriously. <laughs> like mm. if I, you know, me, me being six, six free, I tend to, I tend to bash my head on on a lot of things unintendedly. And I did uh, not know so, you were six foot three. Yeah. <laughs> I had no idea. <laughs> yeah. yeah, yeah, and it's it's also one of the reasons I'm actually a little bit annoyed at, at that fact because like I used to spin so much when I was younger, and you know, be, being my height, it's it's very hard to number one find a, a space to to spin. Um, unless I'm like doing it on a chair or I'm going on like a roundabout or what are those cool park contraptions where you sit in it and just spin around all of those. Um, and, and also if, if I trip up or if I mess up, I am like plummeting towards the ground at a very, uh, very dangerous pace. So I, I tend not to do that a lot anymore. And a lot of my stimming tends to be sort of related to like exercise like you know as i was saying about the hype hypo to to blunt blunt pain and that also kind of plays into a little bit you know in terms of like going to the gym and stuff because for me i don't feel sort of that that pain from exercising very easily so it means that i can sort of push it a lot further than most people can Obviously, again, it's like a, it's it's a double edged sword because I can injure myself and not know about it, or, you know, unless it's like a sharp pain. <laughs> mm. So there's there's a lot of ways that like sensory systems, I think, can be very sort of complicated. You know, I think even even in terms of like the visual system, in terms of like. You no, know, we we often see it as just visual, but there's the the aspect of like the hue of the light, like the color of the light, or the the brightness, or the contrast, or you know, there's there's so many aspects to like how we sort of interpret in our environment. 